It's winter. It's cold. It's a new year. I am I'm looking for something to warm me up and pick me up and maybe even capture the glory of the sun, the Caribbean sun infused into the beans of coffee in the equatorial waistband of the of the planet where the sun still falls all year round and I want to ship that beautiful roasted summer right up here to the northern latitudes and drink that Irish coffee. Let's make some Irish coffee. I love an Irish coffee this time of year. Um, and the best Irish coffee I've ever had, uh, and, and they, they, they're not shy about it, they'll brag about it, it was at the Dead Rabbit Grocery and Grog, a really awesome bar in the financial district of Manhattan, one of my favorite spots. There's nothing super complicated about it, to be honest. It's just about having the right ratios and the using the right, um, the right Irish whiskey. Uh, they swear by Bushmills. Now, I've, I've looked into this a little bit and their official recipe may have changed once or twice. Um, I think they had Cahill in there at one point, but that's what we're gonna make our Irish coffee with. The first part of making an Irish coffee is we gotta make some coffee. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, my Chemex pour over coffee maker, which is very, very pretentious of me. You coffee snobs will be much uh, maligned to know that I don't have the appropriate Chemex filters. So I'm just using these uh, Miele number fours. Um, Miele, Miele, um, Melitas, Melita maybe? I can't, whatever, these. Um, I ran out of the Chemex filters, so I apologize to the extreme coffee aficionados of you. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start boiling my water. You know, the thing is, is you don't really wanna boil water when you make coffee, and I'm not gonna dive too much into coffee stuff, but if the water is too hot, it releases the wrong flavors from the beans, and it makes your coffee taste burned. A lot of times people think that, oh, the coffee was over roasted or something. Actually, the water was probably just too hot. Um, so I'm at going for 92 degrees centi Celsius, uh, which it, it could probably be a little hotter. That's real safe territory without knowing exactly the maximum brew temperature of this particular grind. So 92. And this is, by the way, uh, organic fair trade Mexican Chiapas medium roast coffee uh, from my local coffee roasters. Talking about like the, the right way to make coffee. First off, I probably should have washed the filter. I should have rinsed the filter in hot water. Uh, and I should definitely be using a scale. There's no question I should be using a scale for get my dosage right. Um, but we're gonna adulterate the hell out of this coffee with sugar and whiskey. Uh, so it being pretty good coffee gets us real, real good far down the road. Pretty, pretty good coffee, pretty good coffee. Perfect coffee, it won't be perfect coffee. Um, I wish to hell that I had the patience and the time to make perfect coffee every time I made coffee. But the truth is, is that I just try as I might. I can't make it part of my daily routine. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe when I'm living that life of leisure. <laughs> and I'm ready to brew my coffee. And I'm gonna do a thing I've seen people do. I'm gonna bloom the, the grind. Uh, all right, and so I'm just gonna work my water over. And I'm seeing all kinds of frothy living expansion and crema happening here, and it looks wonderful. Uh, yeah, I had a brief stint as a barista. Worked at this real funky art house twin cinema movie theater, uh, the Brooklyn Heights Twin Cinema when I was in college. And that was one of my favorite jobs of all time. So we took cappuccinos and coffees real seriously. So I had to get pretty awesome on the grinder and, well, pretty awesome. I had to get pretty handy on a grinder and a steam wand. I was not gonna win any competitions in coffee land, but you know. All right, uh, and so we have made coffee. Look at that, mm, smells, smells delicious. And that's the step one to making a great Irish coffee. You could make, any, you could use any coffee. You could even use cold brew if you don't want this thing hot. Um, but otherwise we build it in the glass and I'm gonna use the standard hot beverage glass here. Uh, there's probably a name for that, an Irish coffee mug or a toddy mug or whatever, but that's what it is. And I'm gonna start with a one ounce pour of Bushmills Irish whiskey. Now, most of the cocktails I make are built around a two ounce pour, but an Irish coffee kind of fills a different um, niche in your life. It's not really something you're drinking to elevation. It's just an Irish coffee. It's, it's got its coffee little kick in it. So we make it on a, a one ounce pour and that's the same way they do it at Dead Rabbit as I've been told. Um, it is, their philosophy is exactly that, that the Irish coffee is a nightcap or, you know, it's something else. It's not a cocktail, it's, not, it's Irish coffee. 
So the next thing we will need is a little more than a half an ounce of Demerara Simple Syrup. I got that right here. So I've got gradation lines in here um, and the half ounce is marked pretty visibly to my eye. I'm gonna go a little bit past that, uh, maybe even halfway between that and three quarters. A fat half an ounce, as Dave Arnold would describe it, a fat half ounce. Now I don't even drink sugar in my coffee, but again, this is not really coffee either. It's Irish coffee, it's a, it's kind of a sweet thing. It's a dessert thing. That's the kind of the concept, right? Okay, um, we need three and a half ounces of coffee to do this to um, perfection. Probably gonna burn my hand in the process. So uh, I just measured really hot coffee with a metal jigger. That was stupid. Don't do that. That's a dumb thing that only I do. You should just use a measuring cup or really just fill it to eye. It's fine. We're gonna give that a quick stir with one of my stirring rods just to make sure everything is incorporated, but the heat should have already done that for us. And so they top theirs with uh, homemade whipped cream. I have some options. I, I had to think about this. One, wanted to buy an icy whipper for the show, an ISI whipper. I really did. They're like 110 bucks, then you gotta buy the cartridges, and I'm making one drink with the thing, and I'm not doing rapid infusions, which I know they're useful for, but you know. Uh, it's a lot of money for one thing here. Then I can make homemade whipped cream and just put it on with a spoon, but it's not gonna look very pretty, and I don't have a piping bag. So I, I decided at the last minute, you know, we'll just buy some canned whipped cream. But then, and this is the worst part, I went to the local Whole Foods, and you know this, that place stinks. They don't even have good Ready Whip. I had to get their imitation Ready Whip, their real dairy whipped cream, whatever. Man, you think. Maybe that joke's not gonna land with anybody but me, but I think the idea that uh, the high quality stuff is imitation Ready Whip is funny. Yeah. There we go. That was a little heavy duty, huh? And honestly, that is kind of how they serve it. They serve it with a lot of whipped cream up top. <laughs> I think a little grated nutmeg is gonna really uh, add something to this drink. And so there it is, the Irish coffee, as they make it at the Dead Rabbit Grocery Garage. When they made it, it was the best Irish coffee I've ever had. Let me try it. Me... How will I do this? Oh my God, that's so freaking good. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's perfect Irish coffee. It doesn't get better than that. The Bushmills and the Demerara and the coffee really are awesome together. It is sweet and coffee, like a coffee liqueur, but not too sweet. Like it has the right amount of sugar, but with that Bushmills in there, it has this kind of, um, light and loose vaporous kick that runs right through it. I mean, it is so good. And you can really taste the nuttiness of the coffee, probably accentuated by the Irish whiskey. Um, sometimes whiskey, when you pair down the flavor profile of it to some other base components, it can taste a little nutty. That was good too. That was just a mouthful of whipped cream. That's delicious. If I wasn't worried it was gonna, you know, give me a coronary, I'd probably drink these every day. It's creamy. It's coffee-y. Coffee, coffee, coffee like. It's coffee ish, coffee esque. It's coffee esque. It is, in fact, coffee. Creamy, whiskey, delicious. I mean, it's just. It really is. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. That is perfect Irish coffee. It's really perfect. To the Dead Rabbit Grocery and Grog, I can say that you've perfected many drinks and brought a bunch back from the dead, but you have definitely perfected Irish coffee. Uh, that was. Flippery do fantastic. One more sip, one more. Maybe I should just finish this sucker. I kind of needed a coffee anyway. This is the right time of the day. I think from now on, every shoot of how to drink will involve an episode of Irish coffee. Because right in the middle of the day, man, I've been drinking like scotch and stuff all morning. I kind of need a little pick me up. Man, that's good. Damn. I just can't. Oh, man, I love this. I really love this. I can't get over how good that is. That was how to drink. That was how to drink. Um, thank you guys for tuning into the show. If you like the show, I hope you'll subscribe. Um, I'll be back next week with another cocktail. And in the meantime, if you're interested, maybe you are, I'm on Twitter at how to drink with the number two in the middle. And I'm on Instagram at how to drink with the number two in the middle. 
I got a Patreon at patreon.com, how to drink. I have a uh, website. I have a website that I don't go to very often. I'm, I'm notoriously bad at updating it. Uh, but at thisishowtodrink.com slash gear, you can find the, the tools and things and books and accoutrement that I use on the show. Uh, but I also put links to that stuff directly when it's relevant to the episode right in the episode description. Swaying like a drunken sailor. Um, and uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching the show. I hope you're having a warm winter filled with friends and family and loved ones around you. That the hearth fires are burning and that the cold and the dark stays outside. At the very least, we can put a little fire in your belly. Oh, that's good. I'll see you guys next week with another cocktail. Thank you so much.